Disney Cruises work hard to deliver you the same level of polish and thrill that you find in the theme parks. One of the main ways they accomplish this is a series of highly produced musicals that run every night of the cruise in succession. The Cruisical. They're usually a medley of shows with a diverse range of characters playable by a very small cast of cruise cast members. In 2010, the Disney cruise ships Dream and Magic both premiered yet another musical review, but this time from the perspective of the villains, not the heroes, a concept popularized by the 2002 directed DVD special, Mickey's House of Villains, something the show itself will later make fun of. The recording we're using right now is primarily from a 2015 performance from the Disney Dream. So let's set the mood. It's the second night of the cruise. You've been eating a lot of soft food that is moving through you quickly. You are entering a room. It's dark, full of a lot of your shipmates. The lights dim. Everything is rocking. <laughs> and then these two come wandering down the hallway. Welcome to the underworld! Welcome pain and panic. Oh my God. Right off the bat, man, these performers uh, have some interesting voices. It's like the two of them combined make a decent Bob Cath cold weight, but separately they're like the high and low end registers of his weird voice. And we're just completely ignoring the other character who is played by that Max Edroom guy. This is just a Bob Cath gold weight show, baby. Pain and Panic's costumes really set the tone for how weird this show is going to get. They are very literal translations of the characters' looks from the movies, brought to life with some strange combination of pool noodles and siliconized rubber. They look like inflatable costumes that don't inflate. They look to the audience, lock the doors, and declare, Thanks for visiting the underworld! So I guess we, as the audience, are trapped here in the underworld. Unless, of course, you're like in your room, kids are asleep because <laughs> they're at a long day, castaway K or whatever. And you're like, I got to watch something. I can't stand the sound of my snoring seven-year-old. So you pop this on the TV and then you're just essentially observing this strange Disney comedy death of your cruise ship mates. I don't know. But anyway, if you're here, you're in the underworld, baby. Welcome. In come a collection of tattered spirits. They're all moaning and crawling through the frog uh, under this terrifying skull face thing. And then boom, Vegas Showgirls opening, baby. Look at these costumes, they're super fun. They're full of danglies. You know what, with those top hats, they remind me of the souls of eaten Skittles. You ever suck the skin off a Skittle? It's white, just like these guys. <laughs> Have you ever sucked the skin off a Skittle? Is a sentence I just said, how's your day going? <laughs> Ahoy! <laughs> What's that? The show just started and now you need a bathroom break? Ugh. All right, but you better wash your hands before you come back with today's sponsor, Blue Land. Blue Land is an amazing company with a mission to eliminate single use plastics in a super fashionable way. Show your diehard Disney love while also being planet friendly. Look how easy it is to use. Fill your Disney Forever reusable glass bottle with warm to hot water. Drop one of your planet-friendly tablets into the hand soap bottle. Put the nozzle on after the tablet fully dissolves. Pro tip, use in minutes, no shaking or stirring needed. I take my hand soaped foamed, not stirred. Boom, you got some nice soap right there. These new official Disney designs featuring Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Daisy are gorgeous. I love Daisy, it's my favorite. Sleek yellow glass with a little bit of class. This is gonna go perfect in my new Jungle Cruise themed bathroom. Check this out, planet and people friendly ingredients. All hand soap formulations are biodegradable, EPA safer choice, USDA bio based preferred, and Leaping Bunny certified. And like I mentioned, they have reusable bottles with money-saving tablets that are packaged in compostable paper. No need to keep spending six to eight dollars on all those household hand soaps. Blue Land's refills are only two dollars and create nine ounces of hand soap. That's perfect. All you have to do is click the link below in the video description to get 20% off the new Disney and Blue Land hand soap. You don't want to miss this. They don't ever do this, seriously.
Then, from the trap door, arises Hades in a flame of flames. Now let me say, this guy is a star. He is the hardest working man on this cruise ship. He is, the reason why this weird costume works is because of him. He sells it top to bottom, he nails it. The costume is this weird uh, troll doll wig made of like blue Cheetos attached to a blue bodysuit that runs down his arms and covers his hands. It is an interesting piece though that goes over his brow and down his nose. It's all connected and blended in beautifully with makeup. And then he's got this like flowing, glittery Cher Voldemort robe. Not to be outdone, he has a staff that is suspiciously thick on the top. Like, why is that staff so thick on the top? What's it hiding? Pyrotechnics is what it's hiding, pyrotechnics. We'll get there. Now, the face makeup is a lot. It's a, it's a lot, it's a lot. The nose is a lot. The, ch the chin is a lot. It, it's a lot. It's a lot. Then enter the fates. Man, these are some beautiful puppet costumes. Both of the arms are of course controllable depending on if the performer is left-handed or right-handed, and then they can drop the arm and then use the other arm to control the mouth of the puppet. It's real. Look at the sculpt of these, they're spooky. They're weird, I love them. The fates inform Hades that he's just not evil enough. He's just not cutting it. Hades gets super mad in this conversation and his hair starts to like smoke. There's a fog machine inside of this wig. So Hades must prove that he is evil in one evening. Enter pain and panic with uh, the MacGuffin of the show. This big uh, evilometer, this big old glowy thing. And uh, that kicks off the popular song, Villains Tonight, baby, it's, it's catchy. <laughs> And just put this in, cause I loved it. When I was listening to it, this is what I was doing. All right, there's, that's enough of that. <laughs> and wait, what is that? Long fingers? Why are you guys doing this to me? You know I, I can't, I don't like the long fingers. Oh, Kermit, Dr. Facilier, and now Hades with the long fingers. Understand? Ah! And hey, suspiciously thick staff is a fire stick. Hades decides he needs to like do this some kind of like evil Zoom meeting where he's gonna get some like evil affirmations from his friends so they can really knuckle down and reverse Grinch so that he can shrink his heart and be evil enough to rule the underworld. There's this whole thing where Hades is like, here's the villains I'm gonna invite. And there's this long bit with the sound guy in the booth. And this is for the evil queen. All right, knock it off. Imagine if you're in your room sitting with the kids, sleeping, snoring, B Bobby will not stop snoring. And you're and you're eating your, you know, your your very loose chocolate mousse. <laughs> and you're like, "What's this joke? I don't get it." And neither do we. It doesn't translate to YouTube either. This is for the evil queen. <laughs> In the next scene, we immediately depart from the narrative that we just set up with the invitations and pain and panic, just detour to the under the sea lounge where Ursula yeah. makes an appearance. Ursula. Now, uh, you can't convince me otherwise that they didn't design an Ursula costume and they're like, oh, we need to just write an entire show around it because this is the star. This costume is the star. Oh my God, it's a beautiful costume. It's so great. And the tentacles, the tentacles, they're magic. They're attached to her gloves, but they have their own kind of resistance. So they're moving against her and with her at the same time. It really, really sells it. Man, it's beautiful. And then it's all sitting on top of a gorgeous seaweed skirt that really hides beautifully with the down theatrical lighting. I love it. I love it. I can't get enough of this. Keep an eye out for this Ursula in an upcoming part two of our Ursula villain costume evolution deep dive. It's coming. And this is gonna be the star of the next video, I promise. Ursula's number ends and the evilometer like just feels like just like a little click. We don't get any explanation for how this device actually works, but I'm counting like a one, two, three, there, hey, there's like five sections. So I'm assuming we're about to get at least four more songs. So here's the first Hades break. He pops in, he calls pain and panic. We have High School the Musical as their boss's ringtone, who's the devil, which is a level of comedy I can't even begin to comprehend as a mortal.
We're really leaning in on scene breaks here. Like we're really understanding exactly how long it takes the ensemble to get changed from one costume to the next. These long breaks are excruciating. Now here, okay, like Kenny's like, we can't, we can't include all of these, Dan. And I'm like, how can you not? It's a solid 30% of the show is Hades just wandering around the audience doing terrible dad jokes that are like, that have made their way through seven layers of Disney censors. They saw a sign that said wet floor, they did. All right, it's like the most perfectly sculpted copy so that it offends nobody, All but right. makes everybody like giggle. You know, it's like, it's, it's strange. It's like a train wreck in slow motion. These segments destroy the pacing of the show. The, me talking about these segments destroys the pacing of the video. <laughs> Scene three, Shadowlands. That's right, it's a Lion King number, baby. Trap door opens. Big blast of smoke. And let me say something, what a rad entrance for whatever this is supposed to be. <laughs> oh no, what's on his head? That's a salad mixing bowl. That's a salad mixing bowl. I have three of those in my cabinet right now. This is like a Tupperware, Road Warrior, Scar cosplay. And let me say, I love it. I love it. I want more of it. I want a full Tupperware, Stomp, Road Warrior, Lion King, Broadway revival. Just give it all to me. Give me all that Mad Max Scar action. Then of course Scar is done scatting in a leather jacket and uh, we get a dash of evil in the evilometer. This is slow going. This is slow going, guys. <laughs> and then, what is that? Is that Kronk? Kronk in the parks is usually portrayed as a costume character, not a live face actor. So uh, getting a Kronk real life is a live action dude on a stage is uh, confusing. Uh, just about as confusing as this guy's Patrick Warburton impression. <laughs> Isma, what is this thing? Yeah, that's right. It, you know what? Sometimes it's there, like magic. He, he just sticks it. And then other times it's just as absent as uh, most of his Kronky muscles. Is there a problem? Please keep all arms and legs inside the ride at all times. Por favor, mantenas alejado de las puertas. Was that a theme park joke? Hey, remember theme parks? Oh man, theme parks. Don't you wish you were there instead of on a boat? Yeah, that's right. The Yzma costume is phenomenal, seriously. Uh, it pops on stage against those large background screens. And this number is taken from the Emperor's New Groove TV show, which is kind of cool. The only number in this show to be from a television show. The ensemble is hilarious. I love torture device choreography. That's always like, I mean, sign me up every time. And then what are these giant inflatable henchman suits? They're so weird. They're like, their blue and purple skin is like muscly, but flat, but also weirdly proportioned. It gives me the willies. We get another great bizarre pacing conflict with pain and panic stumbling back on stage with the invites Hades gave them. We do get a really fun quick change as the evil queen. Uh, it's not quick. I mean, it is, it's quick, but like not quick enough to like happen in front of your eyes. Like quick enough that like we need a, like a wall of smoke to hide it, but it's the same lady. Oh boy. And this is Kenny's favorite part of the show. There's so many fart jokes. There's so many fart sound effects. Oh my God. I bet now there's so many fart sound effects going on right now on screen. Kenny, it's your time, baby. Shine, shine, Kenny. Then Maleficent pops in. There's this weird love triangle in the show that I really didn't need at all, but actually kind of plays out later in the Descendants movies where Hades and Maleficent have a baby and it's the star. And that's, that's something. That's something. You know what? They're both fire villains. So I guess, I, I guess the Descendants. We covered it in the Maleficent episode. I'm still sitting here just thinking about it. Like, why did they do that to me? Like, they could have just said that, like, villains uh, spawn, like, you know, asexually with polyps. They just develop a small thing that falls off them, and it turns into a villain. And I'd be like, yeah, that works, like a cactus. Look, we've talked about this Maleficent costume before, but boy, it is wild. That cow with the built-in chin, Oh, oh boy, what a chin. This show loves a chin. If they could put a chin in, they chimney chin chin. Then of course it's the, the audience is tasked with a boo off because you know, we're on a cruise. We love audience participation. You give me every chance to boo I can. 
The Fates return on the balcony, and here's a really great look at the Fates costume, because you can see the palms of their hands, where they have little magnets that allow for the hands to store onto the body, depending on which way the performer is handed and how they want to puppeteer. It's pretty cool. Then Hades, of course, returns for another, like, four-minute joke break that I, will, I refuse to allow ruin the pacing of this video. Ladies and gentlemen, the cast of Cougar Town. Next, we're off to the high seas, which we're already on. So that's something interesting. It's like a bizarre cruise-ception. We're on like on a boat, in a theater, on a boat, and there's like a, the ocean there, but it's not the real ocean. Think about it, man. It's a real thinker, this scene. It's a real thinker. So this pirate medley is fun. It starts with a little bit of Peter Pan, then goes off in a little bit into the Pirates of the Caribbean, and then circles back with a rock yo-ho. Looking at Captain Hook, I suddenly realized that the last few costumes we've gotten have been pretty tame, right? Uh, Evil Queen, pretty tame. Maleficent, uh, other, than chin, other than the chin, pretty tame. Captain Hook's pretty tame. But you know what? Buckle up. Because this scene ends with Captain Hook walking the plank, which of course segues beautifully into a Project Runway Cruella moment! <laughs> Let's walk the runway, baby. Walk. Let's do it. And walk. Let's do it. Okay, I'll stop. This Cruella is actually based on the Glenn Close look from the first round of live action movies. This was before any woman named Emma even considered starring in a Cruella live action adaption. Oh no, I can't say adaption. Adaptation. That's right, I read the comments. People yell at me about me saying adap adaption instead of adaptation because there's a word for it and I'm not using it. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> the conceit of this part of the show should just fill the evil ometer up like instantly. This is like, this is wild. Let the dog sound, see if I take on the poodle skirt. What? What did she just say? A poodle skirt made of poodles? We've gone too far, we've gone too far. This is a fashion show of dog skin. The future of fashion is dog skin in space? Dog skin in space? Dog skin in space! There are so many, so many past canines in this segment. I can't even just fill that elometer up right now, baby. We, we're done. Pack it up. We figured it out. We got a new rule of the underworld. And it's this woman who has a problem with dogs. Suddenly, we, you, me, us, the collective, are forced into this bizarre studio audience for this cringe fest villain confrontation show. Ah, oh, come on, you guys. We're into this, what, 45, 50 minutes now? Are you having fun? How about you in the balcony? Are you having fun? So what we're learning now is that it definitely takes the cast three to four minutes to change their costumes. These parts of the show drag. He's just wandering around with that microphone. Oh boy. Oh, so the topic of this show is evil sidekicks. Hey, you remember when this uh, show was a musical? I do, uh, but it's not gonna be for about 10 minutes. Buckle up. But hey, puppets. The only thing he's ever given me is a headache. Oh no. Oh, oh boy, it's back. The strange celebrity voice impression. And then, finally, Jafar wanders on stage to save us with the song. Really, the wind beneath my wings, excellent choice. Man, this is a great number. I really, really loved it. That duet was so beautiful. It emptied the evil ometer. Now we're gonna have to sit through like seven more scenes of this. And that's really got me broken up. <laughs> How's my acting, guys? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> the fates return to tell Hades that he's done for. Uh, and this this kicks off a this kicks off a scene, alright? I've interpreted it in a specific way. I don't know how you're gonna see it. But essentially, all of the villains unite around Hades to give him some sort of Hercules intervention. Instead, what ends up happening is that he gets extremely worked up because his friends are literally taunting him with his trauma from <laughs> failing against the hero of his story. This, of course, uh, results in an anxiety attack with Hades that gives him the evil that he needs to reverse Grinch's way to the top. So, uh, you know, there you go. 
you know, when your friends are feeling not eagle enough, just bring up all their traumatic past failures and taunt them endlessly until their anxiety attacked into their old selves. This is a show about mental health, really. And then they all lived happily ever after, or not happily ever after. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but you know what? We get a reprise of Villains Tonight, which of course the lyrics say, they say right there. Without a villain in your story, your hero has nothing to do. You know what? I've, that's, a, that's a strong takeaway from this experience. There's a villain that sees my night, I'll tell you that much. It's my new sleep paralysis demon. Old Cheeto wig back there. Woo! I, every time I close my eyes, I just see that pointy nose and chin and those, those weird ch blue Cheetos that are like weird slugs crawling all over his head and like a troll doll wig. I just can't. Every time I close my eyes, I see it. Every time I close my eyes, I see it. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed our hot takes and deep dive into Villains Tonight, the 2010 cruisicle from the Disney Dream and Magic. Let me know if you saw this cruisicle out there on one of your cruises, and then what other cruisicles you want me to take a look at and watch. I haven't watched any of them. I've been saving them so I can make videos just like this for you guys. Hope you enjoyed this series of us deep diving into shows and parades inside and out of the parks. It's a real joy to make. Once again, a special thanks to Blue Land for sponsoring this video. Click the link below in the video description to get 20% off your order of the new Disney and Blue Land hand soap. Villains tonight. Villains tonight. Villains tonight. Thanks so much for watching, guys. As always, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Patreon, TikTok, and Twitter. Looking forward to hearing from you. Let me hear all of your cruisical stories. Really appreciate you guys watching, liking, subscribing, ringing that bell it means the world to me. Thanks for watching, guys. You rock. Sleek yellow glass with a little bit of class. Boom. I'm a poet. <laughs> Poetry is, is uh... <laughs> I started the joke and then I just, I just, my brain just like, well, Dan, what do you want to say poetry is? <laughs> Rewind the tapes. <laughs> you can see the horror in my eyes when I realize I, I have nothing. <laughs> oh.